Day 27. The Door of Her House. Proverbs 5, 3-8. For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. But her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps take hold on hell. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life, her ways are movable, thou canst not know them. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house. Verse 8 again. Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house. Don't come near her house. The strange woman, the harlot, don't even come near to her door. Anything that leads towards lust, any occasion of sin, any risk of lust, avoid. Come not near the door of the harlot's house and her ways. Unfollow those Instagram models. Delete your social media if necessary, temporarily or forever. Turn off those immodest TV shows and movies. Throw away your carnal and vain music. Stop pushing the boundaries. It is the negligent and worldly Christian's practice to attempt to get as close to sin as possible without sinning. To move the boundaries and push the boundaries. If you want to get away with as much as possible in this life and yet still be spared from hell, then I fear for your soul. Proverbs 4, enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it and pass away. You don't draw near to evil, you don't try to push the boundaries. This is, the, this is exactly what the devil wants. You push the boundaries, you become negligent, you want to get as close to sin as possible, and yet you don't know that you're close to falling over the boundary. Thomas Brooks said, God will not remove the temptation, except you turn from the occasion. We are to avoid even the occasion of sin, even things that lead towards sin, to get as far away from sin as possible. The larger catechism says, the duties required in the seventh commandment, which is, thou shalt not commit adultery, are chastity in body, mind, affections, words, and behavior, and the preservation of it in ourselves and others, watchfulness over the eyes and all the senses, temperance, keeping of chaste company, modesty in apparel, marriage by those that have not the gift of continency, conjugal love, and cohabitation, diligent labor in our callings, shunning all occasions of uncleanness, and resisting temptations thereunto. Even the occasion of uncleanness, impurity, lust we should avoid. It's part of the very nature of God's strict standard of holiness. God hates sin with a perfect hatred. We must watch how we dress. We must be careful about what, how others dress as well, especially if you're the head of the home. You must keep chaste or pure company. You must ha have purity in mind, body, and affections. Even the occasion of sin, even things that lead towards lust, you should avoid. And question 139 forbids, quote, unchaste company, lascivious songs, books, pictures, dancings, stage plays, and all other provocations to, or acts of uncleanness, either in ourselves or others. Now, this was written a few hundred years ago. And so what would be the equivalent today of stage plays? It would be TV shows and movies. These are very frequently filled with uncleanness, with immodesty, with lustful images, helping your sinful nature, helping you to waste your time, helping you to be relaxed and lazy in your Christian walk, ignoring Christ and going to entertainment instead, helping your corrupt and sinful heart. 
even pictures, books, dancings, if they are immodest and lascivious, or tend towards such, you should avoid. Proverbs 6 For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and the reproofs of instruction are the way of life, to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. For by means of a whorish woman a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Can a man take fire in his bosom, and his clothes not be burned? Can one go upon hot coals, and his feet not be burned? So he that goeth in to his neighbor's wife, whosoever toucheth her, shall not be innocent. Playing around with sin, drawing near to sin, indulging in questionable activities, trying to get away with much, embracing so-called less carnal, lustful activities than pornography itself. These are not practices of a conscientious Christian, the hypocrite wants to get away with as much as possible and still have heaven. He has the Bible on his lips, but not in his heart. He dresses himself up as a religious and pious person, and yet never had truly mourned over his crimes against God. He's never really hated sin as sin. He may feel troubled about sin, but he doesn't care that it is offensive to God. It is rebellion against God. It is a crime against God. He doesn't care about this. He cares more about his own trouble. He wants heaven. He doesn't want hell. And he's worried and he's anxious because the sin is haunting him. But he doesn't want to give it up because it's sin against God, but because of his own selfish reasons. Does this describe you? Again, A.W. Pink wrote, Does any Christian reader imagine for a moment that when he or she shall stand before their holy Lord that they will regret having lived too strictly on earth? Is there the slightest danger of his reproving any of his own because they were too extreme in abstaining from fleshly lusts which war against the soul? 1 Peter 2.11 we may gain the good will and good word of worldly religionists today by our compromising on little points. But shall we receive his smile of approval on that day? Oh, to be more concerned about what he thinks and less concerned about what perishing mortals think. Being a loose and lazy Christian will not help you to destroy pornography and masturbation out of your life. Go to Christ and his blood by faith daily. Be a strict Christian for his glory, because you desire to honor him in all things, to draw near to him, to be close to him, to enjoy him forever, abstaining from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul for the glory and honor of Christ. Amen.